The optional chaining operator in JavaScript is a very useful feature that allows you to avoid errors when trying to assess properties or methods that may not exist on an object. And in this video, I'll be using some examples to simplify how this operator works. Let's say we have this object here, and this object has a name property. Now, let's say I try to assess info.socials. I'm going to do console.log results, and when I run this JavaScript code, we get undefined. There is no socials property on this object. Now imagine we try to do info.socials.youtube. We don't have any socials property on the info object and now we are trying to assess a YouTube property on the socials property. Watch what happens. If I run this again, now we get an error. The error here says cannot read properties of undefined reading YouTube. So what is happening here is that info.socials as we saw here is undefined. So it's almost like we are doing undefined.youtube and the YouTube property does not exist on undefined. So how can we ensure that info.socials exist before we try to assess the YouTube property? Imagine this object is coming from an API and you expected that this object would have a socials property which also has a YouTube property but in some cases it might not have the socials property. Well this is where we can use the optional chaining operator. Of course there are a couple of other ways you can do this but the shortest way is using the optional chaining operator and here is how. What I'm going to do is info.socials and then I have a question mark. So a question mark and a period sign makes up the optional chaining operator. And what we are doing here is check if info.socials exists. If it exists, then try to assess the YouTube property. But if it doesn't exist, return undefined. So now if I clear this console and I run this now, you can see we get undefined. And why is that the case? Because info.socials is undefined. The optional chaining operator does not bother to check YouTube the operator would just return undefined and that's why we get undefined here. But then let's say I have a socials property and here I have a YouTube property and let's just put link. If I run this, we get link. So the operator checks, does socials exist on info? Yes, it does. Then try to assess the YouTube property. Now let's say I don't even have a YouTube property here. If I run this, I'm going to get undefined. Oops, I'm going to get undefined. And the reason for that is because socials exist, but the YouTube property Property does not exist. Now let's say I come here and I say YouTube.link. YouTube doesn't exist, right? That means it will be undefined. If I run this, I get an error again because info.socials exists, but info.socials.youtube does not exist. And now we are trying to assess the link property and that would throw an error. So again, I can use the optional chaining operator here like this. You can use the optional chaining operator as much as you want. And then it will first check does socials exist? It exists. Okay, check does YouTube exist? If it doesn't exist, then it doesn't check this. It will return undefined. If I run this again, you see now we get undefined. But if I come here now and I put YouTube and let's say I put a link property of um, hello, let's just assume, you see we get hello. So this is how the optional chaining operator can allow you to avoid errors that may occur when you are trying to assess properties that do not exist. And like I said earlier, this operator is not just for properties, it is also for methods. I'm going to take all of this off and let's say we have a method called print. And when you call print, all print does is console.log hello. Now I'm going to come here and say info.print like this, clear my console and run this, you see we get hello because we execute this print function and this does console log hello. The reason why we're getting undefined here is because the print function does not return anything. So by default, it returns undefined. But let's say I do return hello instead, delete this console log. So this would return hello to the result variable. Now let's run this again. Now we get hello. Imagine we try to do info.print2. The print2 method doesn't exist on this object right now if I run this we get an error it says info.print2 is not a function and that is because print2 does not exist on the info object we can again use the optional chaining operator here to say only execute print2 if print2 exists you have the question mark again and you have the period sign the question mark and the period sign makes up the optional chaining operator if I come here and I run this you see we get undefined 
Why? Because info.print2 is undefined. Print2 does not exist in this object, so it is undefined and then the optional chaining operator would not bother to execute this function. It would return undefined to the result variable. But if I come here and I have a print2 and I have a function and this just returns decode, if I come in and I run this, we now get decode. The optional chaining operator checks, does print2 exist? Yes, it exists. And then it would execute that property. But execution would only work if print2 is a function. If I do object.name, I have the optional chaining operator and then I execute this. If I try to run this, we get an error. Info.name is not a function. And that is because name here is not a function. It is a property that has a string value. So you also have to know that this would only work if if the property is a method. So if I change this back to print2 and I run this, you see this now works well. You can also use the optional chaining operator with the bracket notation. Let's say we come back here again, we have a socials and in these socials, let's say we have YouTube, we have link, let's say we have Instagram, we have link and you want to do something like target. And in this target, we have YouTube. And then you want to say info.socials. And using the bracket notation, you want to have the target variable, which is YouTube. So if I come here and I run this, you see we get link. Oops, let me change this to Y link. And let me change this to I link. So if I come here and I run this, don't know why I keep pressing this character. We get the Y link and the Y link is coming from here. Now, what if the socials property does not exist? We can also use the optional chain operator by doing question mark and the period sign. Why do I keep pressing that key? And then you have the bracket notation. So now if you run this, we get undefined because socials is undefined. But if socials exist, then we can assess the target, which is this from this. And if I run this, this now works. So you can use this for dot notation, you can use it for bracket notation. And if you'd love to learn more about the difference between dot notation and bracket notation, I have a video for that. The link is currently on the screen, but I'll also leave the link in the video description. Now, one last thing I want to show you with the optional chaining operator is that you can also combine this operator with the knowledge coalescing operator. The knowledge coalescing operator is question mark, question mark. So what we can do here is I'm going to change this back to just YouTube like this. Now I can use the knowledge coalescing operator like this and then let's say i just give this default what the knowledge coalescing operator does is that it checks if the left operand is null or undefined in the case that the left operand is null or undefined it will return the right operand but in the case that the left operand is not null or undefined it will return the left operand so think of this as a way of setting default values here we are saying info.socials with the optional chain operator and then we have youtube so if this evaluates to undefined this would be returned but if this does not evaluate to undefined then this will be returned let me delete this line here here we have socials and we have youtube so if i run no test you can see we have y link which is on youtube but let's say i delete this socials property if i run no test you can see instead of getting undefined i now get default because this expression here evaluates to undefined which of course is because the socials property does not exist then the knowledge coalescing operator would return this value and if the socials object exists but the youtube property does not exist if i run this again this will be default because socials exist but the youtube property does not exist so it returns on the find then this operator would return this value on the right so you can combine the optional chain operator and the knowledge coalescing operator to be able to set default values for cases where a property in an object may not exist i hope this video was simple enough and also shows you how useful the optional chain operator is and how to use it if you'd love to learn more about the knowledge coalescing operator i have a video on that and that video should be somewhere on the screen by by this side here i hope it pops up on the screen but if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share and subscribe for more simplified videos on javascript like this